Hi, I'm Zena Awesome and this is Dandar Awesome. Um, we just got home um, last evening. Um, we had to stay um, in, the in the hotel the night before. We got out of the hospital um, the day before yesterday. So he actually only spent one night in the hospital <laughs> after his brain surgery. So the dogs uh, missed us because we were gone for a couple days as you can tell they're a little bit more needy so today I think we'll just talk a little bit about how the cancer has affected our lives and I'll see, a little and I'll kind of see <laughs> what uh, Van Dar can add in so for you, how has it affected your energy level? Mine seemed to be a little bit, um, having a little bit more. More energy? Yeah. Well, how many steps did you used to take before you had cancer a day? <laughs> um, a couple hundred. Uh, he's, he's had a Fitbit for quite a while, so he used to get um, usually about 12,000 steps a day working around the farm. Oh, 12,000 on the farm, yeah. yeah. Well, that's before you got the cancer. Yeah. And now you usually get what? 2,000. Yes. Um, yesterday, he did really well. He got, he got almost 5,000 because we went to two different hospitals and he was able to walk the whole hospital even though it had only been two days since his brain surgery. So he's doing really well. But generally, um, what about sleep? Do you sleep more with the cancer? Yes. How much sleep did you used to get before the cancer? Um, I'd probably get eight, nine, seven, eight. I'd say six or seven. Okay. I usually slept more than you. And now he sleeps um, usually nine, ten. Um, so he gets a lot more sleep. So even if he's not feeling more tired, it obviously... And this has been over the three years, more or less, that he needs the extra sleep, depending on whatever chemo, or he's just had radiation, or you've just had surgery. Um, so he sleeps a lot more than he used to sleep. Obviously, it's affected your speech? Ah, uh, yes. Yes. And that's been really frustrating, right? Very. And it's also affected your memory? Well, yes, of course. Okay. And can you read? Uh, no. Sometimes he can read words. Sometimes he can read sentences, but he certainly couldn't, say, read a paragraph or understand a paragraph after his... Even if he was able to actually read it out loud, he wouldn't be able to remember what he just read, if that makes any sense. Well, I could re read it in this, that, and the other, and I might have it for a couple of minutes, and then it'd be gone. Right, right. So, has it changed the way foods taste? Oh, yes. Most of it I don't like anymore. Everything looks, everything feels, tastes bad or blah. Well, as I say, not so much that it tastes bad, it just doesn't taste good. Blah. So it's blah. There, there's a bit of a difference between <laughs> bad and blah. Um, and of course the cancer has affected what we go out to eat and get because we don't want to go to... Um, we limit fast food restaurants. We, I won't let him eat at a buffet, um, except of course when he's on the cruise. Um, so it's also because of immune compromised, it's limited our options for going out and doing things. We do not want to be around children at all because as I like to say, children are little Petri dishes and he doesn't need to be around a petri dish of, of sickness. So, um, 
even if the grocery store or Walmart's really busy, I don't really like him going in and being around all those people. So that is why we started visiting the national parks and driving around. Um, he can sit in the car, he can get a really nice view of everything. We have a van, so I say car, it's a van. And he, if he wants to get out, we can get out, but we're not like closed in with a bunch of people. So Comic-Con was kind of, we hadn't been around that many people in, well, in years. I remember when we walked in and I saw the escalator. I mean, because we don't go to malls or anything. I don't think I've seen an escalator except at the cruise, but we always had bags, so we couldn't take the escalator. And I'm like, I wouldn't let you go up an escalator. Um, so it's affected your mobility too, right? You don't walk as yeah. easily as you used to. Yeah. Um, and you can't drive. Right. Um, can you help me bring in the groceries? Not really. Oh, and with his new biopsy he just had, since they removed a piece of his skull, his, he's not allowed to lift more than 10 pounds, 7 to 10 pounds, because um, they can't actually um, suture the skull in. I guess with other people they might use screws, but if, because he has cancer, he needs to have a lot of MRIs. And if you put any metal in there, you'll get reflections and you won't have accurate MRIs. So pretty much they just put the flap in and I don't know what they use to hold it, but I don't think it's it's very much. So um, if he was to lift anything heavy, he could actually um, cause the piece of bone to move. Same thing is about sneezing. He needs to be sure he doesn't hold his sneeze or that he doesn't blow his nose really hard. So, and of course, because it's bone related, this uh, limit on lifting is for eight weeks because the bone needs to fully heal before he starts lifting things up. So I can't even give him a bag, if he could carry it in, of groceries, because it would be probably way too much. Yep, yep. So I have to remind him with our dogs, because some of our dogs are over 10 pounds, like, <laughs> like this one, that he can't reach, reach and, and pick her up. Let's see. Um, what other things has the cancer affected? Well, obviously I had to quit we had to quit our business because I couldn't take care of him and run the business at the same time. We moved because of his cancer. We moved to our retirement home. So at least we had a retirement home to move to. Um, let's see, what else has it affected? We try to eat healthier. I mean, I do. He says he eats whatever I put in front of him. Yeah, so I don't have a problem. But because I, I know that he needs to have all the nutrition to help him fight his, his disease, we work hard at trying to make sure he gets good nutrition and then um, balance that with calories. He gets a lot of butter. Uh, Let's see, what else has, oh, what else has it affected? You've had some incontinence issues? A little bit. And so about a year ago, we went to wearing Depends. And I don't see reason to stop. Well, it's, the problem is, is we just never know when there's going to be an issue. And part of it's just that he doesn't necessarily feel it when he needs to go soon enough. And then he walks so slowly and then back before we went to the bed, depends, the other thing we did is we went to stretchy top pants. We got away from the jeans. He used to wear jeans and a belt, and so I'd have to unbuckle the belt, and, and you know, if he doesn't get the signal fast enough, and then he walks super slow and has to be really careful, it just, it caused more problems. So we've changed the clothes he wears. Um, obviously, we have to shave your head. Well, that's because of my... Um, Normally he wears his tumor treatment field, but right now he has got, he just had brain surgery, so he's got stitches in, so he won't be able to wear that. Stitches, yeah. Yeah, he won't be able to wear that until they come out. So, you don't eat as much in a single sitting now, right? You get full faster? Yeah. Do you think that's like you're, because it doesn't taste good, or you're just maybe a little bit nauseous? I just don't feel 
hungry. So it's kind of like I could eat, but I don't feel I don't feel a reason to eat. To eat. So, so I feed him a lot more small meals. So it's changed that he can't drive. He can't help me with anything. He can't. His tastes have changed, so the food we eat has changed. The way we serve the food has changed. You have a hard time using a, a knife and fork, right? Uh, yeah, they don't um, work as well. <laughs> so at home, I tend to put everything in a bowl and give him a spoon. Um, he doesn't have any teeth. We'll do that in another video. Um, we got dentures on the way. We need to go do a fitting. They're already ready for the final fitting, but he just had surgery. I didn't want to go over and get a fitting when he just got out of the hospital. So it's pretty much affected every aspect of our lives, not to mention um, the stress. Uh, obviously, um, glioblastoma is considered fatal. So you see on all his paperwork that it's all just palliative care um, because he can't be cured. How many doctor's visits do we have? Um, A too lot. many. Too many. <laughs> well, he has to have a neurologist. He has two oncologists. He has, well, more than that now. And he's got a neurosurgeon. And then we see specialists up in San Francisco. And... He's got his primary care, um, he's been seen in the liver clinic, he's seen in the podiatry clinic, he's seen in the eye clinic, <laughs> and uh, so you add all these appointments up, oh and we, we haven't, we've been somewhat declining the physical therapy, occupational therapy, and speech therapy that he could be having since it's 105 miles away, that's a long way to drive just for a little bit of take this weight and do this with it, you know, and I can eat that at home. So we do a lot of the um, exercises ourselves, and I try to make sure he gets up and walks and everything. So everything is planned around doctor's appointments. Um, when he was getting his, oh, we have planned around chemo too. Mm. Because often, well, like, for example, he was on a Vastin for 18 months. And a Vastin is an IV infusion every other week. So every other week we had a standing doctor's appointment. So you try to plan trips and vacations around that, plus the other appointments from the other clinics. So that was, oh, and then you was getting an MRI every eight weeks, and now you're getting an MRI every six weeks. Yeah, MRI is a separate appointment because you got to go to the MRI. It's usually not scheduled with anything else. So, lots and lots of doctor's appointments. Um, everything revolves around doctor's appointments. We, um, my decision is since we started, um, I started taking care of him full time, I've cut out, except when we're at the doctor's office or something, I've cut out all live TV. And other than this, as, as ironic as it sounds, pretty much all social media, we don't watch the news. We don't really usually know what's going on. Um, so I don't need to hear the bad things that are happening out there. Um, all my energy is focused on Bandar and us working on doing as well as we can and being as positive as we can. And, you know, if something happens out there, some disaster, you know, I don't need that to think about or to bring me down. I can't do anything about it, and it doesn't directly affect me. So, um, really out of touch. Um, we watch all our stuff on uh, Netflix, Hulu, CBS.com, and CuriosityStream. Oh, and we also have Amazon Prime, so I can download stuff there too. So, um, all my stuff's commercial free. So we watch what we wanna watch, when we wanna watch it. We were doing that before the cancer, but now I, I used to watch a little live TV, but now I don't watch any live TV. So, obviously the cancer has totally changed the way we live. Um, some of it for the better. Um, we always wanted to travel. 
we actually had bought the van before he was diagnosed with cancer because we did want to travel around some. So now we don't have as many animals and when we do travel we usually take the dogs with us. So obviously when we had horses and chickens and was watching other people's animals and stuff we couldn't we couldn't do that. So we get to travel and we get to pick and choose what we want to do because we don't have other responsibilities. Our main responsibilities to ourselves and going to the doctor's appointments. So if we decide just like, oh, tomorrow we don't have an appointment, let's go camp at X, we can just up and go. And that's her. <laughs> um, we also don't do anything on a fixed schedule, even with a lot of our traveling. It'll say, oh, well, you know, I plan on us being out by noon. Well, if I'm not feeling well and don't feel like I can load the car fast enough or it's just too much work, it's like, well, you know what? I think we'll leave tomorrow. <laughs> We've done that a few times. Um, we're on a, if it's not the doctor's appointment, we're in retirement mode. We do everything slow-mo. We take our time. Um, it's usually not that critical. Well, I can't think of anything else. Again, we would love it if you'd ask questions, give, give comments, help give us some ideas of what direction um, some people would like to see the videos go. We're pretty much going to do videos every day. We had a couple days where we didn't do them because um, he was in the hospital and we weren't home. So um, I posted them when we got back. But. We're going to continue to post regularly, so if you like what you see, please, please subscribe and tell your friends. Thank you very much. You dogs. Our hmm. dogs, our dogs are thinking you very much true. Yeah. Thank you. Again, this is what happens when we're gone a couple days. They're, they're like... You can tell that our dogs just hate us. Yeah. Oh. Again, thank you very much for watching our videos.